Good morning. This is Mother's Day. Welcome to our Mother's Day service. I'm glad that you're here. Uh, often on Mother's Day, uh, I choose a, a mother from the Bible, uh, Mary, the mother of Jesus, or um, uh, let's see here, uh, Hannah, the mother of Samuel, Eunice, the mother of Timothy, Ruth, you know, in the line of, of Christ. And, uh, but this morning, I, I want to look at motherhood more in, in general. Uh, I'll get you to turn to Ephesians chapter 6. We're going to read there uh, in, in just a moment. I was noticing the, the first time that the word mother is mentioned in the Bible is in Genesis 2.24. And it's, um, it, it gives an indication of what motherhood is going to be like. <laughs> it says, therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother. Uh, being, being a mother, being a father, uh, is, is a job where you're trying to work yourself out of a job. You're trying to make your children able to live without you. The, the second time that the word mother is used in the Bible is in Genesis 3, verse 20, when it says, And Adam called his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all living. I was thinking, what an amazing thing it is to have been the very first mother. Uh, Eve, the mother of all living. Uh, a couple of things we learn from that. One is, uh, there's no life on other planets. Uh, she is the mother of all living. And as well, there's no place for racism. <laughs> we all come from the same stock. And, you know, part of the Ten Commandments is honor your father and mother. Now, some, some mothers have taught this to their children uh, better than others. And uh, oftentimes it's because they, they use the strap. Uh, I heard of a, a man who said he, he gave his seat up to a woman who was standing because as she stood there with that strap in her hand, it made him think of his mother. <laughs> and uh, oftentimes that's the way we, we, treat, we teach our children uh, is through uh, demanding excellence from them. You know, God has given uh, great mothers, and what a blessing it is that uh, God tells us we can honor our father and our mother. It's, the Bible says, as we're reading there in Ephesians chapter 6, it's the first commandment with promise. Let me read Ephesians 6, verse 1. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. He goes on and talks about fathers not provoking their children to wrath and so on. But it's the first commandment with promise. You, you, you read that and you think, oh, that sounds simple enough. <laughs> if you've never had children or never been a mother, you think, oh, that's, that's easy. Why can't they control their children? Uh, but there's a lot of difficulties in being a mother. I thought we'd look at some of them in the, the book of Proverbs. I just looked up the word mother, and it was interesting how often it was associated with uh, some, some problem that springs up. We're going to be looking at uh, motherhood's difficulties, motherhood's direction, and uh, motherhood's design. Uh, Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 1. We'll start with the difficulties. Proverbs 10, 1 says, The Proverbs of Solomon... A wise son maketh a glad father, but a foolish son is the heaviness of his mother. Now, if you're a mother, you understand exactly what that's talking about, uh, the heaviness that, that can be involved uh, when your children do wrong. But, but even when your children do right, there can be a, a heaviness that's, that's involved uh, because uh, there's just that, that weight of, of hope uh, for them. Uh, the Bible even says of Mary, you know, as uh, Jesus was being circumcised, Simeon blessed them, and uh, he said to Mary, This child is set for the fall and rising again of many in Israel, and for a sign which shall be spoken against. Then he says to her, Yea, a sword shall pierce through thy own soul also. Now, what a difficult thing it must have been, being the mother of Jesus. Uh, the heaviness. And if you're a parent, you know... Uh, there are the highs and lows of emotion uh, that are involved with, with being a parent. It, it can be difficult. In chapter 15, verse 20, he indicates that sometimes our children will dishonor us. A wise son maketh a glad father, but a foolish son despiseth his mother. I found it interesting how at some ages children just love their dad or they love their mom. 
But then they can also go through a time when they despise their mom or they despise their dad. Um, it doesn't have to be, but uh, there can be terrible uh, difficulties in, in raising children. In uh, chapter 23, verse 22, he says uh, something similar when he says, Hearken unto thy father that begat thee, and despise not thy mother when she's old. I find a lot of people, as they get older, begin to realize the difficulties that their parents went through to be their parent, and sometimes are a little bit more forgiving. But not always. Uh, some people bear, bear a grudge right, right to the grave. Uh, sometimes our children will want nothing to do with us. Uh, this is Proverbs 19, verse 26. He that wasteth his father and chaseth away his mother is a son that causeth shame and bringeth reproach. Uh, there's situations where uh, children just want, want nothing to do with, with the parents. Chapter 20, verse 20, Whoso curseth his father or his mother, his lamp shall be put out in obscure darkness. Man, this is sounding, <laughs> this is sounding pretty bad, but this, uh, the Bible is not naive about life. Uh, God knows. He knows that being a parent is difficult, and sometimes there are very difficult situations that arise. In Proverbs 28 and verse 24, Whoso robbeth his father or his mother and saith, It is no transgression, the same as the companion of a destroyer. Uh, there's people who hurt and even rob uh, their own parents. Well, our goal as parents, your goal as a mother, is to bring up wise, productive, and obedient children. In Proverbs 29, verse 15, the rod and reproof give wisdom, but a child left to himself bringeth his mother to shame. Uh, we can't expect our children to raise themselves. Uh, God has a design, and it includes a father and a mother, a family. And uh, parenting, being a mother, can be very difficult. But as Christians, we believe we have God's help and that he can uh, see us through and, and help us in all of these things. God has directions for a mother to follow. Now, we've looked in Proverbs, and uh, Proverbs has much to say about specifics uh, for a mother and father in, in, in raising children. Uh, we read Proverbs 29, verse 15. Verse 17 says, Correct thy son, and he shall give thee rest. Yea, he shall give delight unto thy soul. And there's a lot that God says about parenting children. But this morning I want to look particularly at being the person that God wants us to be. In, in Titus chapter 2, and, and particularly for mothers, Titus chapter 2, and starting in verse 3, God gives us some directions for mothers to follow, uh, directions for godliness. How to honor the Lord. Titus chapter 2 verse 3 says, The aged women likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things, that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. Now, here's some directions uh, that God has. Uh, I was saying to someone uh, this week, you, you hear it teaches that older women should teach the younger women. And I said to him, I, I think the reason we're not seeing this happen is nobody wants to be called an aged woman. <laughs> and maybe that's not true, I don't know. Uh, in, in looking at this, this is probably women uh, past child, childbearing age. Uh, women 60 and older in, in those days. Uh, the aged women uh, should have learned to honor the Lord as, as Christians, uh, holy, uh, have a holy life and being able to control themselves and uh, being able to be an example and a teacher of good things. And then he talks about eight different things uh, in this passage that uh, these old women should be able to share with the, the younger women. And the first one is be sober. Now he's not particularly talking there about not being drunk. That should go without saying. The, the, the Bible says, be not drunk with wine. No Christian should be drunk. Uh, I don't believe any Christian should have alcohol in their home. But uh, he, he's not saying, don't get drunk here. He's saying, ha have a sober attitude toward life. Um, have your thoughts under God's control. 
and God's direction. You know, the book of Proverbs, the whole Bible gives us uh, much about wisdom. And we need to be people who are finding and following the truth. You know, the world will misdirect us. Uh, there is so much that's said about marriage, really against marriage. So much that's said about women and really against God's standards for men and women. Uh, God says, first of all, be sober. Have a, an attitude. I'm going to give an account to God. There, there's a, a poem I came across comparing the men and women. It's, they say that man is mighty. He governs land and sea. He wields a mighty scepter over lesser powers than he. But mighty power and stronger man from his throne has hurled. For the hand that rocks the cradle is the hand that rules the world. Uh, being a mother is a very important thing. Uh, having that time with, uh, with your children. And so many in, in our world today are throwing that away. Uh, they're hiring people who are not mothers uh, to mother their children. And uh, God encourages you here. First of all, be sober. Have a godly attitude uh, towards things. Secondly, he says, love your husband. Uh, one of the things that involves is have a husband. Uh, so many nowadays are having children uh, and no marriage, no family. And uh, there's a lot of, uh, of trouble because of it. The, the word he uses here, love, is not the word agape. Uh, godly love. John 3.16, God so loved the world. Uh, we should love everyone like that. This is uh, affection. Uh, having an affection for your husband. Uh, that's, that's specific. That's not for everybody. That's just for your husband. And uh, God encourages and, and tells us here that there should be affection in the home. Now, if you read your Bible, you'll find that the main responsibility for love in the home uh, is God puts on the Father. But he does tell women here, love your husband. As well, he says, love your children. Now, you wouldn't think God would have to say that, would he? But he does. Uh, unfortunately, that's not always common. Uh, the Bible tells us in uh, 2 Timothy 3 that in the last days, perilous times shall come. And uh, some of the things he says is, uh, men or people shall be lovers of their own selves. And he says in verse 3, without natural affection. Uh, there's a lot of people who don't love their children. Uh, there's a lot of people who, who don't love anyone but themselves. And God tells us, uh, we need to be sober. Uh, love your husband, women. Uh, love your children. And love is not primarily a feeling. Uh, that's the mistake many times people make. Uh, love is a commitment. Love is an action. For instance, in Proverbs 13, 24, he that spareth his rod hateth his son, but he that loveth him chasteneth him betimes. You know, there's people who oh, I love my children too much to spank them. Listen, God says if you really love them, you'll chasten them. And that word betimes means early. Don't, don't wait till they're teenagers. Uh, you need to do it early. Do it when you can, when you can make a difference. Love your children. I've always found it interesting, in 1 John chapter 5 and verse 2, he tells us what love really is. 1 John 5, 2, he says, By this we know that we love the children of God. Oh, great. He's going to tell us. What is it? When we love God and keep His commandments. That's the way to love our children. A wife, that's the way to love your husband. Husband, that's the way to love your wife. Is number one, love the Lord. And God will help you then in those other relationships. Love your husband. Love your children. And then he says there in, uh, in Titus, be discreet. Teach them to be discreet. But that has to do with being disciplined, uh, of a sound mind, uh, being under control. Uh, don't fill your mind with rubbish. Uh, you know, there's so... Any thought you can imagine, I mean, it's out there and somebody's promoting it. Uh, don't let your mind be turned from the things of God. You need to be under God's control. God said in Romans 12, 2, Be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Being discreet has to do with knowing and doing the will of God. And God can help you uh, with that. Be discreet. Then he says, 
be chaste. This kind of makes me chuckle. I mean, every husband believes a wife should be chaste. He should chase his wife. But that's not what he's talking about. He's talking about here being, being pure. God wants us to be pure. And that's the call God makes to every Christian. We've been going through the book of 1 Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians 4, 7 says, For God hath not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness. That's God's call for men, women, uh, children. And as a wife, be chaste. You know, the world promotes the idea that uh, you can just do whatever you want. Uh, unfortunately, uh, young women today are being taught uh, to love whoever they want. Uh, farm out their children. Uh, don't worry about being sensible. Just do whatever pleases you. Uh, don't worry about being pure. You know, just fulfill your, your own lustful desire. Don't work at home. Uh, work outside the home. Don't worry about being kind. Look out for, uh, for number one. And, you know, there, there's great pressure on people to move away from God's standard. Uh, God has directions for us. And for women uh, and for men, uh, he, he has the same standard of, of holiness. In uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 7, uh, he's called us to, to holiness. In James chapter 3, he says, The wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable. It struck me this week as I was reading that verse, this is the reason many of our homes don't have peace, is they didn't start with purity. They started with immorality. Uh, many of the homes, you know, they can't even say, this is my husband or this is my wife. They have to say, it's my partner or, or this is the one we're living with right now. It needs to start with purity. The wisdom that's from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle and easy to be entreated full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. It's James 3.17. God wants you to have a peaceful life. And it doesn't start by being selfish. God says, whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. You sow selfishness, you're going to reap to the flesh corruption. God has directions for us to follow. And uh, uh, parents, you can mark it down. What you do in moderation, your children will do in excess. I'm talking about sin. If you just lie a little bit, man, you'll, you'll raise a con man. Uh, if you just drink a little bit, uh, don't be surprised if you have a, a drunk for a son or a daughter. If, if you just cheat a little bit, uh, listen, what you do in moderation, they'll, they'll do in excess. We need to be holy people. And then he says to, to the mothers, keepers at home, love their husbands, love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home. Now, this is not popular today. Uh, the idea that a wife uh, should take care of the home. We uh, heard on uh, morning television the other day, uh, uh, it was told of a, of a woman who uh, was a, a great wife and mother and uh, really sacrificed to make sure her husband was looked after and breakfast and house clean and so on. And oh, they, they rolled their eyes and mocked her and, and just made fun of, of her standard of really of godliness. I, I don't know the person. It's not popular today. But you know, if, if you're a Christian, uh, I hope you say you believe the Bible. Listen, are you, are you going to tear this part out? What are you going to do with it? If you're a wife, if you're a mother, God says you need to be a keeper at home. That's one word, interesting in the Greek. And that one word is a combination of work and house. It's just talking about being a keeper or a guard of the house. And uh, you know, a lot of people don't like that. He, he talks about it as well in 1 Timothy chapter 5 and verse 14 when he says, I will therefore that the younger women marry, bear children. And by the way, I don't know if you've noticed, it's only women that can bear children. That's still true. Guide the house. That, that's pretty much the same emphasis he's making in Titus. Guide the house. Uh, you set the standard. You set the direction uh, many times as the wife and mother. Give none occasion to the adversary to speak reproachfully. It's interesting. The same conclusion he comes to in Titus, he comes to here in Timothy. The reason we follow these directions is so that the adversary won't be able to reproach the Lord. He says the same in Titus, uh, that the word of God be not blasphemed. We need to be people who believe and follow 
God's word. Then he goes on and says that the aged women need to teach the younger women to be good. <laughs> you know, being good is a good thing. <laughs> I find it interesting that uh, people mock folks uh, for, for doing right. Oh, he's a do-gooder. Like that's a bad thing. <laughs> Uh, it's good to do good. I'd much rather have a neighbor who does good than a neighbor that does bad. He's just talking, about, talking here about being kind, being a blessing. There's a good example of that in uh, the book of Acts, chapter 9, uh, a woman known mainly probably as Dorcas or uh, Tabitha. In Acts chapter 9, uh, she had passed away, she died, and uh, they, were, uh, they said this woman was full of good works and alms deeds, which she did. That was her testimony. She was a good woman. And as they were mourning her death, in verse 39, it says, The widows stood by him, by Peter, weeping and showing the coats and garments which Dorketh made while she was with them. Now, here was a woman whose testimony was she was a good woman. You know, the average woman today doesn't have time to be good. They're too busy. They're doing this and that. They're not keeping the home. They're not looking after the children. God has a tremendous call, higher than any call that you can, you can get outside the home, is to be a mother. If God has called you to be a mother, don't look down on that. Don't look past it. Listen, you miss the opportunity and you'll never get it again. Children grow up so quick. That little boy that used to fit on my lap, Man, he's in his 40s now. <laughs> he doesn't fit on my lap anymore. Uh, the time has passed for, for raising the children uh, in just a very few years. Uh, take the time that God gives you to be a blessing. Uh, use that time when they're young and, and as they grow. And then the final one there in Titus uh, chapter 2. Uh, good, obedient to their husbands, uh, to their own husbands, uh, that the word of God be not blasphemed. Uh, obedient to your own husband. Uh, women, you're not responsible to obey every man, but you are responsible to recognize your husband as the head of the home. That, that's very simple. Uh, this is really looked down on. Uh, I was looking at some quotes by uh, uh, some in the, in the feminist movement. Um, Gloria Steinem, you might have heard of her. By the year 2000, we will, I hope, raise our children to believe in human potential, not God. Uh, another leader Sheila Cronin, since marriage constitutes slavery for women, it's clear that the women's movement must concentrate on attacking this institution. Freedom for women cannot be won without the abolition of marriage. In the Declaration of, of Feminism, right back in the beginnings in the 70s, the end of the institution of marriage is necessary for the liberation of women. Therefore, it is important for us to encourage women to leave their husbands and not live individually with men. That's the very beginning of, of the feminist movement. He uh, goes on and says, All history must be rewritten in terms of oppression of women. We must go back to ancient female religions like witchcraft. And boy, they're doing it. Uh, folks, if we believe the Bible, we need to follow God's word. Don't be swayed by the culture you live in. Listen, this culture will pass away. This country will pass away. But God's word will stand the test of time. And you need to be a person uh, that follows God's word. Another writer in the, the Feminist Salvation in the Humanist magazine wrote, let's forget about the mythical Jesus and look for encouragement, solace, and inspiration from real women. 2,000 years of patriarchal rule under the shadow of the cross ought to be enough to turn women toward the feminist salvation of the world. Folks, that's not salvation at all. We need the Lord Jesus Christ and uh, God can, can help us. He has directions for, for mothers and, and for fathers. Now, why does God say this? He tells us there in verse 5, that the word of God be not blasphemed. Listen, it'll bring glory to God. And moms, it'll help your children. If you'll live for the Lord, it will help your children. All that we do should bring glory to God. As you honor God's word, two things will be accomplished according to this passage. Number one, you will eventually become a holy older woman. <laughs> now, I got to tell you, it creeps up on you. Uh, you look around and, oh, hey, I'm an, I'm an older person. Uh, I look at the news and I see somebody my age and I think, boy, they look old. <laughs> uh, it just happens. And you don't want to become older and not be wise. You don't want to become older and have wasted that time for the Lord. 
If you'll honor the Lord as a young person and as a middle-aged person, you'll, you'll reach a point where you'll have a better understanding of God's Word. You'll have examples. One of the things I find happening in my own life is you see something happen, and you've seen it before, and you know how it's going to turn out because that's just the way it works. And the, the frustrating thing is oftentimes people won't believe you. <laughs> you go to them and you, you plead with them, oh, don't take that route. Here, this is where it's going to end. Oh, not us. Uh, we need to obey God's word. We need to honor God's word that the word of God be not blasphemed. Listen, the world will blaspheme God's word. Don't let it be you that gives them the ammunition. Follow God's word. Now, the reason we do this, this is God's design. Number one, you can become a holy older woman. But secondly, God's word will not be blasphemed on your part. God's word will, will be honored. You know, others will see and be blessed. Jesus said in Matthew 5, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. What a blessing. As, as we obey him, uh, God can, can be honored. But as well, our children will see and be blessed. Children live, learn what they live. Uh, they see what you do. Uh, you can say whatever you want, but they watch your life. Uh, children have little hypocrisy finders. Uh, you know, they, they know what, what you really believe. And if you'll follow the Lord, uh, it will help you and it will help your family. Uh, Proverbs 1.8 said, My son, hear the instruction of thy father and forsake not the law of thy mother. Interesting how God puts it there. The law of thy mother. Uh, there's an underlying attitude that a mother puts into the home. Someone has said, and I believe it's true, uh, the mother is like the Holy Spirit of the home. And uh, God talks about the law of the mother, the attitudes and, and the directions that uh, will be set by what you do as, as a mother. Uh, they'll see about family from you. They'll see about submission to authority from you. Uh, they'll see about honesty. <laughs> Uh, you know, I've heard people say, uh, you know, tell them I'm not here they, and teach their children to lie. Uh, children will learn about what's right and what's wrong. They'll learn about forgiveness from you. Uh, they'll learn about dealing with problems and, and irritations, uh, partly by how you deal with them. Uh, they'll learn about goals and what real success is. They'll learn about friendships. But especially they'll learn about God. They'll learn about God from you. I often uh, talk to people at the door, you know, I, I go door knocking. And uh, some years ago, I remember meeting a woman and was talking to her about her soul and, and scriptural things. And, and uh, she said to me, <clears throat> well, my mother said that if you just do the best you can, uh, that, that's all you really can do. And I said to her, as I often say to people, well, would you be interested in, in hearing what God says about that? And she said, no, not really. I'll just go with what my mother said. I thought, wow, uh, what a responsibility is on us as, as parents. Uh, we're pointing our children or not pointing our children uh, to God. Someone has, has written this, Lord, whom am I to teach the way to little children day by day? So prone myself to go astray. I teach them knowledge, but I know how faint they flicker and how low the candles of my knowledge glow. I teach them power to will and do, but only to learn anew of my own great weakness through and through. Lord, if their guide I must be, oh, Lord, let my children see their mother leaning hard on Thee. Uh, the mother's creed needs to be God first. God first. There's, uh, there's going to be times when we'll fail. Yeah, there's things I wish I'd done different as a father and as a husband and as a pastor and so on. And when we fail to follow God's word, we need to tell the Lord we're sorry. And we need to tell those affected, our children. You know, one of the best testimonies you'll ever have to your children are those simple words, I was wrong. Will you forgive me? God's design is for you to have a right relationship with him and with your family. But it has to be in the right priority. God's design is that you as a mother would honor the Lord. And that happens when you have your priorities right. Let, let me share a couple, couple more verses with you. Uh, the first one is Matthew chapter 10 and verse 37. Matthew chapter 10, verse 37. Jesus says, 
He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. You see, your, your priority needs to be God is number one. More than your parents, more than your children. God needs to be your, your priority. Love God most of all. And then in Matthew chapter 12, verse 46, Jesus has been teaching, and it says, While he yet talked to the people, behold, his mother and his brethren stood without, desiring to speak with him. Then one said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brethren stand without, desiring to speak with thee. But he answered and said unto him that told him, Who is my mother, and who are my brethren? And he stretched forth his hand toward his disciples and said, Behold, my mother and my brethren. And here's the verse I want you to see. This is the point he's making. For whosoever shall do the will of my Father which is in heaven, the same is my brother and sister and mother. See, put God number one and do God's will. Do God's will. That's the primary relationship you need to be concerned about in your life, is your relationship to your Creator, to your Redeemer, to your God. When you do God's will, your family will be blessed. It's all about relationships. And it starts with that very first one, our relationship with God. Uh, let me ask you this morning, do you know the Lord? Do you have a relationship with Him? Someday you're going to give an account. You're going to stand before God. And He's either going to say, welcome home, child. Or the Bible says He's going to say, depart from me. I never knew you. And what He's saying there is, we don't have a relationship. It's not that God doesn't know you. God knows everything about you. But you need to have a relationship with God. And the Bible says that only comes about through Jesus Christ. God in the flesh. God the Redeemer. John 1.12 says, But as many as received Him, Jesus, to them gave He power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on His name. God wants to have a relationship with you. That's why He made you. Uh, I would encourage you, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and then believe His Word and go on and be blessed. Uh, do it today. Uh, don't put it off. What, what a blessing it would be to make Mother's Day the day that you trusted Christ as, as your Savior. If you have questions, I hope you'll contact me. I'm happy to take phone calls or emails. Uh, God's Plan of Salvation is on our website, fbcbrisbane.org. Uh, take a look and that will give you the information to know how to, how to contact us. Uh, God help us to be the people that God wants us to be. Uh, there's a, a song I wanted to, uh, to read to you. It's called A Christian Home. Oh, give us homes built firmly upon the Savior, where Christ is head and counselor and guide, where every child is taught his love and favor and gives his heart to Christ the crucified. Oh, give us homes with godly fathers, mothers, who always place their hope and trust in him, whose tender patience turmoil never bothers, whose calm and courage trouble cannot dim. Give us homes where Christ is Lord and Master, the Bible read, the precious hymns still sung. O oh Lord, our God, our homes are thine forever. I hope that's true. I hope you've trusted Christ as your Savior, and I hope that you've determined in your heart that your home will be his home, that he'll be welcome, and that he'll be the Lord and Savior. Uh, not only of your life, but of, of your home. Let's go to him in, in prayer, and we'll be dismissed. Father, we're so grateful for your loving kindness. Uh, Lord, we don't understand everything, but this is a simple message, Lord, this morning, and we thank you for that, that we can have a marriage, and that we can do our part uh, to, to do what's right. Lord, help us to follow your directions so that we might fulfill your design uh, for marriage and, and for family. Thank you, Lord, for mothers. Uh, thank you for my mom. Uh, Lord, uh, I thank you for my wife, uh, the precious uh, uh, way that she's worked with, with me and with our children. And uh, Lord, we're, we're thankful for godly women. Thank you for this time today, and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, thank you.
Thank you.